the bus to go to the airport to go to London. Who yeah, is our bus driver? Who? What? Who is our bus driver? Oh, no. Look at this bus driver. <laughs> oh, where do I start? Applied for the passport a long time ago. Never came. Like two weeks ago, we called Congress. And they're telling us, oh, we have a 100% success rate. So I'm not worried. You know, Wednesday happens. They say, hey, we're going to get an overnight shift to you. Thursday, nothing happens. Friday, nothing happens. On the weekend, you know, they go on their weekend. Monday happens. They say, yeah, I still can't get a hold of them. What you got to do is drive down at 8.30 in the morning, wait at the passport office, and just hope they answer my call so I can get you in. I show up at 8.30, talk to security, talk to their manager a handful of times. Eventually, he tells me the passport is either in our possession or it's on a FedEx truck. And then like 10 minutes later, they just call me up and point me to a window. He just hands me a passport. I'm like, ah, and the name, it's my name. It's, it's me on the passport. And then we sprinted back to church just to be able to get on the bus. And, and now I'm here. And Yay! Yeah, praise God. Yeah, yeah. The, the passport was either in the passport office's possession or FedEx had it on a truck. And as we left, FedEx was coming in. So it was perfect timing. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> We're at the airport! Whoa! Woo! but we're just more aware of it. And here comes Jeremiah because two men are missing. We're vlogging. <laughs> the late <laughs> have arrived. Here we go. Joey, <laughs> how are you feeling about evangelism today? So English. No, I'm really excited. Um, I'm really pumped to just kind of talk to everybody that I see. Yeah, no, yeah, Trafalgar Square is gorgeous. I can't wait to talk to people. Are you nervous about anything? Less nervous than the States, um, weirdly. Yeah, I don't know. Like, just we kind of scoped it out yesterday, and so I'm excited to just kind of move through a line of people. Everyone's sitting down, they're just waiting for us. So, yeah, I'm really excited. I think I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I think the preparation's been helpful, and I think growing in our love for people and the lost just helps. So, yeah, the first six people uh, that we went up to just shut us all down. Uh, we had one conversation that was not fruitful. It was just kind of argument. They didn't believe in God. They were giving their reasons why. Mm. So it's just not great. But then I had one conversation uh, with a guy from Iraq uh, named Alex, and that was super fruitful. He had um, been talking about his wife and kids. They're all Christian, and his wife actually prayed over him last night. Wow. Um, so I felt Whoa. like it was a total divine appointment. It was super encouraging uh, to talk to him because he was saying he studied uh, many religions and Christianity was the only one that made sense. So I really got to hone in on that and just explain the gospel to him. Mm. It was very encouraging. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. We had such a great time. Josh led the ones with the guys and I led the ones with the gals. Josh had a long conversation with a guy from Ireland while we both did. It was really sweet. One was from Egypt as well and another from Spain. <laughs> a couple sat next to me from Argentina and they reminded me of my past and I was afraid to talk to them because I was thinking, no, they're just going to reject it. But by God's grace, I talked to them anyway and they listened to the full gospel. They received tracts and they were polite. But I'm really praying that the call to repent and believe in Christ pierces their hearts and bothers them truly until they turn and find eternal life. But it is heavy being here and there's so many people who just believe nothing happens or a reincarnation and so it's heavy but praying that people come to know the truth because it's so beautiful to have eternal life. Amen. 
Well, they'll certainly be more willing to listen when you say, you know, hey, can I ask you a kind of a crazy spiritual question? So I think also just have it in your mind that you'll probably be rejected a lot. So the Lord answered our prayers. We pray this morning for boldness and energy because a lot of folks woke up at like 1.30, 2.30 in the morning. And uh, he was so gracious. God was gracious to do both. We had a wonderful time evangelizing a bunch of folks at Trafalgar Square. I don't know, probably folks from around 20, 25 different countries, Dominican Republic and Wales and Germany and Spain, all kinds of places. A lot of really good conversations with people from all over the globe. And it was actually kind of a bummer to stop at like 7.15, 7.30. Christian is he's implying you are going to do the testifying but you won't do it without a divine resource but it still means the physical words proceeding about the gospel have to come from your mouth and your mouth and your mouth that's what the Jesus of the Bible is. because if it was just a man who went up at the cross he couldn't pay for anybody else's yeah, nice sin work. very good is this tomato sauce? That was a dainty bite. It's not tomato We've been walking through the suburbs of London for about, what, 20 minutes? Yeah. We've gone through a rainstorm. How are you guys holding up? Great. We're holding together. Oh, they're fine. What? I said I still have my fingers. A lot of people are offended the tracks in their own countries. That's something super exciting. So let me share with you what sparked this whole vision. That was way back in 1981. Good morning from London. We are a bit tired this morning. We're running on less sleep, but God is good and he's given us yet another opportunity to hand out tracks and to evangelize. It's legal in London. It's not encouraged. Why even have them? It's illegal. We can say toilet pretty well. Toilet. <laughs> wow, look at that oh. steam. Oh, there's more to come. Oh, that's hot. American gentlemen, there's some more pizzas to, uh, <laughs> to, to deliver. <laughs> Yummy yeah, that's okay. Just so I can open the door. Oh, do you need Josh to lift up the building? You can also do that. <laughs> yeah, I Josh can steal. Wow, so pretty. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Today was great. So we started out by going to the coronation and we were just handing out these actually, hound bills. <laughs> people were eating them up. A few people who were grumpy didn't want to take them. That's okay. And there's some French lady that we ate lunch with. who's was really cool believer, loves the Lord. And after that, we went to Grace Life and just hung out with them. Ate some pizza. You know, it's interesting how the Lord unites people from different countries. Never knew these dudes. We were having a blast talking about the differences between the UK and America. And then we came back, hung out for a little while, and then went and ate Turkish food. It was great. Good morning. It is, what day is it? Sunday in Sunday. London. We are being led by Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> We're going to Grace Life London, where Pastor Jeremiah is going to preach on Philippians 2. Hey. Hey. And then we're going to go out to evangelize with the Grace Life London team. Get your oyster cards. Get your oysters. Come on. Oh. 
We're broke. What are you most excited for today, Austin? Probably the evangelism. Or lunch. Or lunch, yeah, yeah. As long as it's not that ham yeah. sandwich again. <laughs> Whoa. What are you most excited for today? This sermon yes. and uh, seeing the Grace Life community again. We got to meet them yesterday. They were great. So now that we're getting there really early, we get a lot of time to talk, yeah. fellowship. So yeah. What are you most excited for today? <laughs> Probably preaching. Yay. All right, Good morning. Slosh. Welcome to Grace Life London. Thank you, thank you. What thank is, you. What is, what is your favorite place that we've been so far? Um, Trafalgar Square is pretty cool. Great place to evangelize and just beautiful. Will you introduce your son? Yes, my, I brought my son on the trip. It's always special for a father and son to travel <laughs> together. Uh, you, see, you see Joey here. Um, it's our first international trip, actually. I'm so proud of the big guy. He's really taking it well. So Jesus not only emptied himself of his riches, he also emptied himself of his beauty. I'm feeling very nervous. I'm really thankful that it's God who strengthens us. Can I give you this? I wish I could get a video of Wesley, but I don't want to be stumbling. We just finished sharing the gospel Yay! with people. We were kind of amazed that the anger towards God and Christ here is very painful and hurtful to see. You don't want them? Are you awake? How was your evangelism today? Uh, it was really good. I went with Edna. Um, we talked to some people from Italy, Sweden, many others. Mostly rejections, but we had a few solid conversations. Some people uh, recognized that they needed to repent of their sin, but weren't ready to do it. So just giving them tracts and uh, faithfully sharing the gospel. We're going to East London and we are going to go talk to some Muslims. It's going to be a good time. We learned a little bit about it to be bold and fearless and courageous. We got the stacks. How many you want? Can I get a handful? Handful, yeah. We are in Stratford, London, which has a highly dense Muslim population. Uh, we've been hearing from the locals and the Grace Life London people that this place is very closed off to the gospel. So we may face harder rejection, but I mean, it's all for Christ, all to glorify him. And we're just here to share the, the good news of the gospel. Let me you that I am not a light. I am the voice of to come and open the doors. I want to go talk to that man over there who's leaning against the post. Okay. You good here? Yeah, or do you want to come with me? Okay. This is Scotty. Hey. <laughs> I'm Austin. <Austie. laughs> He's full of grace and truth. Make a distinction, it's Josh Chen, not Josh Cassidy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was confused. I'm a little dwarf. <laughs> Actual depiction of scale. <laughs> I know. <laughs> not from London at all. And he was sitting there cross-legged on his phone like this. And like, I stopped and talked to him. I was like, hey, can I, can I ask you a crazy question? He's like, okay. So I asked him, I was like, so what do you think happens after you die? And then he took like a, 
like a deep breath and exhaled and exit out on his app on his phone, put his phone in his pocket, uncrossed his leg, took his glasses off, put it, and I'm like, okay, this is getting sketchy. Like he's, he's not saying anything, but he's putting everything away. He's like, I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> He did all this. He did all that just for me to say, you tell me. And I was very grateful. But that was a very good conversation because he let me explain the full gospel to him and his wife came up towards the end of that. They were grateful, I, I would say. One of the, the most grateful that we've talked to. I had a cool moment. I, I told somebody and I was like, oh, my, like, my feet are kind of sore. Like it was a, I told you at some point, like that was the first time all week I felt like sore feet. I was at lunch thinking like, oh man, we got like three, four hours left. So I was like, Lord, it'd be nice if, you know, my feet don't hurt so I'm not distracted while I'm talking to folks. I stopped thinking about it and it didn't occur to me until like almost dinner and we were talking about it. And we, it was in dinner and I'm like, oh, my feet don't hurt. And they haven't hurt since I had lunch. It was so neat. And I never thought of it again. You're telling me all I had to do is pray? I'm hurting right now. <laughs> you have to have to stronger faith. <laughs>7 p.m. We've shared the gospel with a lot of people and we've also been rejected by a lot of people. And then some of them will mock, but some of them will listen and take a track with them. So it's sweet. I've really enjoyed my time here. Scotty, tell us. Yes, my boy. <laughs> tell us about huh? a, a good evangelism, either today, yesterday, whenever. Oh, I, I don't really know where to start, boys. Oh, yeah, like today. I pulled up half an hour ago. I just, we talked to some atheists and the moment when Joey mentioned hell, that guy was running, bro. But pray for them. Yeah. On Monday, we went to Stratford. We talked to a Christian cult, which is, yeah, that was tough. Yeah, lo loads of conversations this weekend, man, and this week, so hopefully these souls will be one. Stay in London. We're doing well by God's grace. Do they just like helicopter in or? It's like two big mapping things. Okay. One, two, eight, four. Okay. And so now you guys keep both, like you keep all your hands up. If you get it right, you get it right. So you want to be the first one of these. You want to get ready. One, two, six. Oh, dude, oh, that's crazy. crazy. Adios. Adios. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get home? Go nine nine. Hug my cat. Mm. What about you? Uh, what about you? What? What? What about you? Yeah. Oh. Okay, oh. here we are. We're leaving. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Ready, one, two, three, one. Yay! 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 We made it! We made it! Well, first off, I just want to say thank you so much for praying for our trip. Thank you for financially supporting the trip. We could not have gone without you. Now, in thinking about our time in London, a few things stand out. First, the harvest is plentiful. Almost everyone we talked to was an unbeliever. And we talked to people from at least 50 countries from all over the world. And almost everyone with limited exception was an unbeliever. We talked to Hindus, Muslims, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Catholics. Many of the folks we talked to were atheists, especially if they were from Europe. So not only is the harvest plentiful, but it was also so clear that the human heart is hard. 
Europe in particular is hardened to the gospel. Piercing their heart was like piercing concrete with your finger. It was impossible, only God can do that. People had virtually no interest in God. Often they would reject you as soon as you mentioned the word God. And I had one girl from Hungary tell me she hated the church and hated the Bible. In another conversation with two girls from Australia, one of them had this smirk on her face the whole time that communicated, you're an absolute fool. I had this one Muslim kid tell me when Allah comes back to judge, I'm gonna be a scorch mark on the pavement. So it was very clear over and over again just how hard the human heart is. But the last thing that stood out is how faithful God is. Faithful to answer prayers, faithful to keep the rain away, which would have derailed our evangelism. Faithful to open the doors to many gospel conversations. Faithful to give us energy to be on our feet for 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Faithful to give us courage and boldness in the face of relentless rejection. And indeed, I think when we get to heaven, we'll be surprised to see how faithful God was when we meet many of the people we evangelized on that trip. So I just want to thank you again so much for praying for us, for financially supporting us, and for being invested and involved in the trip. And Lord willing, when we all get to heaven, you'll see just exactly how much God used that time in London. Thanks again.